What's going on, y'all? So welcome back to another NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima tutorial. I believe this is episode 7. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, go ahead and check it out. I created a brand new playlist. So in this video right here, we're going to briefly go over the rendering settings and the rendering types inside NVIDIA Omniverse. So I have the sample project here that we used previously which is the astronaut, and I just went ahead and deleted him. Okay, so that being said, let's go ahead and drag and drop our character here. Now, this is Chet the Jet. I am currently creating, trying to create a little short with this character right now. We're going to reset him to default, and I'll just scroll with my mouse to kind of go away and get further. Right click. <laughs> that actually worked perfectly. And I have a camera here. So as you can see right here, my previous tutorial, click on the camera, go to the keyframer, and then select it and then click on jet or chat and now he is in focus so with that being said if you look right here you're gonna see the different rendering settings for the nvidia on reverse you have your real time and then path tracing which is pretty much everything i do i do path trace but let's take a look at the real time real quick if i click on the real time right now you're gonna see that it's gonna switch and if i click on the render settings right here you're also going to see that this is going to switch to the real time. So if I change this to path tracing, this is going to change to path tracing. Okay, so let's go back in there and it's going to go back to real time. I'm going to go to the left right here. Now the common is shared between every single renderer. So you don't have to worry about that. This is not specific. So it doesn't matter if you have real time or path tracing. Uh, this common right here is going to stay the same. I'm going to untwirl rendering. If your computer supports multi-threading, go ahead and check this. I don't mess with the geometry. I'll go to materials, textures, map, map levels. The higher number, the better. Just make sure you have enough memory for that. Uh, right here is texture on demand streaming. Same with Unreal. This is pretty much your texture streaming. You can turn it on and off if you want. Again, depending on your hardware. And let's move on to the lighting right here. If I create a new light, I'm gonna show you this a little bit better. If I create a rec light, and I'll go to perspective right now and just kind of move this to the side, kind of like a side light. Go back to my camera. If I increase the shadow bias of this, you can see that the shadow looks a little bit better. But again, I think this affects performance. So be very careful whenever you're tweaking these settings. As you can see right here, it's getting a little bit of detail back. It's, pr it's pretty nice. It's a really good setting. And yeah, I'll go ahead and reset that. And you can see everything's just gonna lose and get crushed. All right, um, down here in the hemisphere sampling. So this pretty much right here, you can choose what part of the dome light will affect your character. Do you want the upper and the lower hemisphere or do you want just the upper to pretty much affect that light on your character? So with that being said, let's go delete this rec light and I do have a dome light right here. And you know what? I think it's better if I go ahead and just do like a sample here, or here. Let's go to assets. Let's go to skies. And let's go to cloudy. And I'll just drag and drop that there. Okay. Close this. And then if I click on the parking right now, if I click on this primary ray, you're now going to see this light. So we're going to go back to that camera. And you can see this dome. And I'll hide this background for now so you can kind of see it. If we go back to the render settings, if I go to upper, you see that it's gonna get some skies in that skylight, right? And then if I go to the environment map, you're gonna see this is gonna be like a 2D. So you can mess around with this. So let's go ahead and leave that as default is fine. And flow right here, you can turn on the ray tracing for the flow, which is the sim. Like um, when I did the short film, I used the flow sim. And I think it looked a lot better when I turned on the ray tracing for the simulation of that uh, jetpack. So you can mess around with that again. And that's pretty much everything I kind of mess around with in the common tab. And what I'm going to do now is move on to the ray tracing tab. And if you're familiar with ray tracing, it's pretty similar. So the first setting we're going to take a look at is the eco mode. This pretty much stops the rendering after, you know, a frame doesn't change. You can set the frame here. So if it didn't change in like 100 frames, it's going to stop it, which saves a lot of energy. So that's a really cool uh, option right there anti-aliasing now one of the crazy thing about in nvidia omniverse is there's actually dls s anti-aliasing and this is what i use the most for now and it looks really freaking good uh you can set it to performance balance or quality but i usually leave it in quality here if i'm using real time you can enable disable shadows it's up to you 
Again, all of these lightings and ray tracing settings, the higher the sample pixel, the higher the quality, the more performance it's gonna take. So it's pretty similar. Denoiser, or you can use a denoiser in here as well. Like I said, I don't really use real time that much. And then moving down right here is max roughness for reflection. This is real time ray tracing reflections. If you wanna go crazy, go to one. You know, that's gonna look really good. Uh, the mass reflection bounces, be careful with this. Be careful with increasing this right here, okay? Just giving you a warning, take it easy, you know? I definitely scene by scene kind of thing, all right? I don't usually mess around with this in here, anything in here, because honestly, it looks pretty good by default. If you wanna learn more about these right here, like in detail, check out the documentation, it's pretty amazing. All right, so let's look at indirect diffuse lighting. There's AO in here that you can enable. Okay, and you can use some denoising as well in there. And again, you can increase the max bounces and samples per pixel, you know, like four. Now for me, a good rule is like four samples per pixel and then, you know, max bounces, I'll leave it at four as well. It's, it's totally up to you. And again, depending on your hardware, okay? Just be very careful. Let's move on to the post-processing. If I go right here, this is a tone mapping. I uh, pretty much changes the way your uh, your your final image look. I usually leave it at Aces, but if you want to export linear, you can do that as well. But honestly, I just leave this at Aces right here, and it's fine. It looks pretty good. Auto exposure right here. I usually set the min and max to one each, so that I don't get auto exposure. So I would just leave it like this, so that I wouldn't get auto exposure. You know, like if you have a crappy camera, it's gonna auto expose. We want to keep that as manual. So I have that in there, it's all good. Now color correction, I do everything in post. So I don't change this, I don't change the color grading, but you can if you want. All right, so you got motion blur and you got bloom. I don't really use bloom. I think it's it's just doesn't look good. And you got some noise and film grain in here as well, which again, I, I do all this stuff in post. I don't, I don't mess with this. I want something that comes out as clean as possible out of NVIDIA Omniverse and I can just put stuff on there afterwards. All right, so let's move on to the path tracing now. Uh, if I click on path tracing here, and I'll switch over to path tracing here. Anti-aliasing, right now I leave this by default. Triangle one is okay. Firefly filtering, I never had to change this, but if you're getting a lot of firefly effects that, you know, those little bright, bright highlights that just flicker, so you can mess around with this here if you want to. If I scroll down right now, now this right here is actually the viewport, okay? Whenever you render, I'm gonna show you that later. If you have a really nice rig, again, NVIDIA Omniverse can support multiple GPUs. So if you want real-time path tracing, you can actually absolutely do that <laughs> if you want to. You can crack the samples pixels if you want, and it's gonna look really good here. But I'm recording this on a single card. It's probably not a good idea. All right, we got sampling, caching. I leave everything by default. Now, denoising right here is a little bit tricky. Do not add a number here unless you don't want the denoising to take effect because this is actually blending factor. So if you want denoising, leave it to zero, okay? You can path trace fog. I haven't used fog that much in NVIDIA Omniverse, to be honest, but it's there if you want to. And this right here, I honestly have not touched it. And that's pretty much it. That is the different rendering settings. I didn't touch eye ray as well, because to be honest, I haven't messed around with it yet. Maybe in the future I will, but I mainly focus on path tracing right now. And really those are all your options. All right. I'm sorry that was a really long video, but there's a lot of stuff to cover when it comes to render settings in NVIDIA Omniverse. If y'all have any questions, again, let me know and I'll see y'all later.